Welcome, I'm Ed Phillips. Great to have you with us. Thanks so much for joining us. We have a very special guest today, a man that I've known for a number of years, who is a professional stargazer. And I'm going to let him explain it in great detail, but a professional stargazer is, is someone that has his eyes to the stars. He has the website and company called Stargazing for Everyone, stargazingforeveryone.com. His name is Tony Lacante. Let's bring on Tony. Hi, Tony. Great to have you with us here. Hello, Ed. Thank you for having me. We have a little darkness in the background there, and you're going to explain that in a few minutes, exactly why you're in this little dark box, because uh, I'll tell you, Tony takes this very seriously. And, uh, you know, just in general, what is a professional stargazing? How did this start in your life? Well, a lot of us, when we were younger, would go outside and we'd look at the moon and we'd watch how the moon changes brightness, changes its phases, as we call it. And then we look up and we see the stars and we see a couple of wandering stars, which we know are the planets. And we kind of get interested in, but we never really followed it. Well, when I was five years old, I actually got a chance to look at Saturn through the telescope and I was hooked on astronomy ever since. And then uh, buying telescopes, binoculars to you know further my interest in the, in the nighttime sky, it led to you know a real love for for just the the hobby, and then I started to share the hobby with neighbors, scout groups, local schools, and it turned into this uh, niche business of uh, teaching people about the nighttime sky and teaching them how to use their telescopes or how to better use binoculars to see certain things in the sky. And so that's pretty much how it all started and how it progressed to, you know, to a business. And Tony, we're going to have some tips to uh, for the amateur backyard stargazer. One of the things that impresses me is I remember when I was a child, I had one of those old uh, Micronta. I even remember the name of the brand, an old Micronta telescope. And my dad had gotten that for me. And back then it was like a lot of money. They were really expensive. It seems like this is a hobby now that more and more people can get into because the, it seems to me that uh, we compare the rate of inflation, it's actually gotten less expensive to get into this hobby. Right. Uh, you know, most people, you know, they rush out to get that telescope and they see all the ads in the in the magazines. And, you know, you go to the big box stores and you see the telescopes there. You can really start out with a basic pair of 10 by 50 binoculars from, you know, like a Walmart or a Target or, or some store like that for under $50 uh -huh. to enjoy the sky. But the telescopes themselves now with the technology, uh, they have built-in GPSs, they have automatic go-tos, you know, you push a button, the telescope goes to whatever object you want to see. And the cost, uh, when I started, you know, an eight-inch telescope, a simple eight-inch diameter lens, you know, mirror, uh, was probably close to $2,000. Now you can get that same type of eight-inch telescope for, you know, maybe three or $400. So the price has really come down, the quality has improved, and all the technology is now built in. So it really makes for the backyard stargazer, um, you know, a lot of sense to, you know, learn the nighttime sky and then, you know, progress into uh, the telescope or binoculars as your interest grows. Well, Tony, let's talk about that uh, backyard stargazer. Um, we have been kind of programmed that, well, if you live in the city, you can just forget it. Is that true? No, it's not true. And that, that, that's one of, the, that's one of the, 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 the big, you know, no nos of teaching people about the sky. Yeah, it's great to get out to those Maricopa County parks or away from the, uh, you know, city lights and see the gorgeous Milky Way, you know, during the summer months. It's spectacular. Yeah. It's one of the natural wonders of our world. But from your backyard with a simple pair of binoculars, you can see a handful of galaxies that are trillions and trillions of miles away literally you're looking back in time millions of years mm -hmm. and you can see star clusters nebulas um you know bright comets uh, all the planets from mercury even out to neptune can be seen in a pair of binoculars be careful with mercury it's too close to the sun though 
That's for sure. It's really low on the horizon. Um, yeah. I don't think it ever gets more than what, 15 or 20 degrees above the horizon. Not very much, right? Yeah, not, not very much. It's always close to the sun. So it's something you got to yeah. be real careful. Make sure the sun is set or hasn't come up before you start looking for it. Yeah, that's it. And, and that's just one tip. And, and uh, Tony, you've got some other tips that, that you can share with us. You said about the binoculars and tell us right. How about what else would should we choose to do that? And by the way, you can go to his website, stargazingforeveryone.com, and and get more information. So we want to encourage you to do that. Stargazingforeveryone.com is is Tony's website. Right. Well, the uh, you know binoculars are a great start. And not only can you use them for stargazing, but for bird watching, you know, sporting events, you know, different things like that. Uh, there's lots of apps. I see people with their phones now. You know, they're taking selfies and they're doing all sorts of apps. Uh, there's four apps uh, that I recommend uh, for people that are starting with their cell phones. Uh, one is Skywalk, uh, Sky Map, uh, Stellarium, and then my favorite is Sky Safari. Mm. And Sky Safari can also be uh, put on your computer, could be used in uh, an app on your phone. And it helps you, you know, identify the different constellations, name the stars, uh, become more friendly with the nighttime sky. You know, I tell people, you know, I go outside every night that it's clear. And yeah. you know, even though I'm not looking through my telescope or binoculars, um, reintroducing myself to the stars. You know, the stars are my friends. You know, you walk into your backyard, you know where your tables, your chairs, and your trees and your flowers are. I go out in the backyard and the constellations are my friends. The stars are things that I've seen for the last, you know, 60 plus years. So, um, you know, go out, make friends with the sky, use your apps. And then I have a, um, this is called a planisphere. And basically it's a universal star chart. And um, you, let me get my fingers in here. Uh, you get the, uh, this, the map and then you rotate the time and the date and you can see how it changes and you can see how the nighttime sky changes. Yeah. And you can see what's up in the sky. You don't even need an app. You know, technology is cool. But you, you can take this and you say, hey, I'm going on a trip in three weeks. What, what's going to be up in the sky? You can dial up the date and the time and see, you know, see what's up there. Oh, so yeah, the, the apps are cool. And this is called a planisphere, a planner meaning flat sphere. OK, what, what you said about the, the apps is something that has changed tremendously. I mean, uh, in the interest of, of full confessions, Tony and I met mm, what, 15 years ago, thereabouts. About uh, that. Yeah. And um, uh, we were on a radio show together. I had him invited as a guest, and and his passion for this subject has has never ceased to amaze me. But you find out all of these things, and what has developed since then, though, in the last ten plus years, is these apps where you don't have to go out and go, "Where's that?" You know, you, you just don't have to do that anymore. And that's always been a challenge: is is just getting your uh, bearings, I guess, so to speak, on on what's outside. Um, there are some neighborhoods, and I happen to live in one now, it's really hard to even tell what direction things are. I mean, once yeah. the sun goes down, it's like you have no idea, and the, the sky is not as good. But but tell us about our physiology a little bit. What what do you need to do when, to yourself physically to, to, to do this? And I know that's an odd question, but I know you know the answer. No, no, no that, 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 that's a very good question, because like I said, going out away from all the city lights, uh, really helps because your eyes dark adapt and dark adapting is actually a chemical change in your eyes. So when you go out into your backyard, you want to turn off the floodlights, turn off the pool light, uh, try to get away from the neighbor's, you know, lights in the backyard there and, uh, uh, you know, let your eyes get used to seeing the nighttime sky for about 10 or 15 minutes. Don't look at anything really bright. Uh, if you're having a star chart or a book, you want to use a red flashlight to maintain your night vision. And then you just want to relax. And I get a, a you know, like a, a lounge chair, a pool lounge chair. I lay flat or I put the blanket on the ground and, um, you know, I just look up and just enjoy the nighttime sky. You know, I live in, in Glendale and, it's, you know, pretty bright, not too far from Glendale Community College. There's all sorts of parking lot lights and strip malls and stuff like that. But if you let your eyes dark adapt, you'd be amazed at how many more stars you'll be able to see. So the real key for the stargazing is let your eyes dark adapt to be able to see in the night. Thank you, Tony. Let's come back to uh, the box that you appear to be in right now. This is your 
uh, back now. Everybody doesn't. You don't have to do this. But but Tony yeah. is like I say, he is a professional stargazer. People will go to his programs and learn from him. And you do programs at uh, the county parks. Now, of course, if that was pre-COVID. That may have changed. That information, of course, is on your website as, as that's updated. Um, right. But tell us, maybe give us a little tour, if we can here, of your observatory. OK, well, um, I have my uh, uh, telescope here. Let me get my other camera on here. And uh, it's a 10 by 10 roll roof observatory. Okay. And uh, here, here's the telescope. And, uh, you, you know, you don't need to have this size telescope. This is an 11 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. You can see all the wires on there in the very front to the uh, far right of your picture there is where the camera is inside that little tube. Ah, and then okay. there's a, a secondary telescope on the back, that little red spot right about, whoops, right yep, about. There it is. Uh, yeah, we see it. Uh, that's, a, that's a guide camera. And then uh -huh. this giant mount with about 50 pounds of counterweight there uh, has all the built-in controls and the go-to telescope. And okay. with this, I image galaxies, you know, literally millions of light years away, star clusters, exploded stars, comets, the planets. But you don't need this type of equipment. You know, it's like any other hobby. You can progress as, as much as you want. And then, of course, I have, you know, different posters in here. Uh, sometimes people come for lessons and um, I have different posters, different objects, you know, what they can kind of see in the sky. And then, of course, I have the entire uh, star nighttime sky over here to you know, learn the constellations. Uh, so, you know, we, we do a lot here and then a, a lot remote. We create the videos. We do uh, lectures online. But... Uh, uh, as far as the telescope goes, uh, you know, what you're looking at here is probably close to $10,000 worth of equipment. For about 100, you know, 100, $200, you can get a nice push and uh, shove go to um, a telescope, a Dobsonian. You know, for about four or $500, you can get, you know, some smaller telescopes that will show you the rings of Saturn, the moons of Jupiter, mm -hmm. the. Um, craters on the moon, you know, bright star clusters and things like that. And once you get up about five, more than $500, the, the entire universe opens up to you. There you go, the entire universe. Well, you, you mentioned cameras, Tony, and I understand that you share a lot of pictures on Instagram. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, probably about three years ago, um, uh, I started to do imaging through the telescopes with specialized CCD cameras. And so I post my pictures up there and I give you the uh, technical information, what telescope I used, what camera I used, what the exposures were and things like that. So people that are interested in trying to take pictures, they have an idea of what equipment I have and, uh, you know, how I'm taking the pictures. Uh, back uh, when they start to come out with the decent uh, uh, cameras on your cell phone, if you even have, you know, those... $200, $300 telescopes, you can hold the camera of your cell phone right on the eyepiece and get great pictures of the moon. Seriously? And it's amazing uh, the really? details that you'll see. Yeah. I, I did not know that. I, but I know the cameras have gotten better, but I didn't realize that they could do that. Oh, yeah. It, 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 wow. The images, and, and I got a couple of pictures uh, that I've taken uh, with the cell phone on my website, but. Uh, uh, it, it's really easy to do. The, the hard part is holding still to take the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and that only gets worse as you get older. Trust me on that. Hold yes, on. I know that. I know that for a fact. Know that for a fact. Yeah, yeah but it, it, it's a lot of fun. This is something you can just walk out the backyard. Uh, you don't need any equipment to stargaze. Binoculars help out. A planisphere or a cell phone app helps out. And just being going out about, you know, Every couple of weeks, you'll see how the sky changes. The stars yeah. we see in January at nine o'clock are totally different than the stars in July at nine o'clock. Sure. And you get an idea of, you know, how the ancient people thought we were in the center of everything, how the stars move and you don't feel like you're moving, you know, but the stars are moving. The moon is moving. One of the it's favorite really things that, that you've always, excuse me, one of the favorite things that you've always shared with me is the word planet and the origin of that word. Would you share that with our audience? Yeah, the word planets uh, comes from the uh, Greek planeteos, which means wandering star. And if you look at the fixed stars, the background stars, the constellation stars, night to night, year after year, century after century, they really don't appear to move. 
and of course we're not here century after century but if you watch jupiter see where it was in the sky this past season and next fall you see where jupiter is and you see where venus is in the morning sometimes and venus is in the evening sometimes you see how the planets the moving stars because they look like stars and they're called the wandering stars and that's what planeteos means greek word for wandering star well, Tony, let's uh, wrap it up with uh, where we can get in touch with you, where you have information, and of course, uh, maybe your Instagram yeah, the, as well. <laughs> well, the website is stargazing4everyone.com. Four is F-O-R. Uh, the Instagram is at stargazing for everyone. And then uh, our, our phone number is on the website. And then uh, you can email me. My email is at the bottom page of, uh, bottom of the page on the website. And, um, you know, you can give us, give us a call, send us an email if you have questions about buying a telescope, how to use a telescope, and, you know, things like that. What can I see? When can I see this? You know, what meteor showers are coming up? Where's the best place to go? Um, you know, we can help you out with all of that. And your Instagram? Instagram is at stargazing for everyone. Tony, you're a wonderful guest. It is great to have you here. And uh, we want to thank you. We look forward to uh, your future endeavors. And I'll tell you, if you've ever been to one of Tony's programs, you're, you're gonna, I, the very clever comment that I came up with was, whoa. And that was about <laughs> as good as I could do. I mean, it was just like, and you're, you're exactly right about the, the uh, rings around Saturn. When you see those, you're thinking, we are just little tiny people, aren't we? <laughs> and little well, the, the rings, the amazing part of the rings is that they're so big. If you tried to squeeze Saturn, the rings between the Earth and the Moon, the rings touched the Earth and the Moon at the same time. Unbelievable. Tony yeah. Lucanti, thank you so much for being our guest here. And uh, we appreciate you being with us here on BYTV. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care.